Great to have you with us. Now, security has been beefed as the Accra International Conference Center ahead of the premiering of Tiger IPI's number 12 investigative piece. Accra Regional Police PRO Ifia Tenge has been briefing the press on security arrangements put in place to ensure peace and order. Meanwhile, to ensure an event-free premiering, the producer of the investigative piece, Anas Arimeo Anas, has also been touring the facility to assess the level of preparation. Yes, this is one of Anas's videos. And um, as usual, the police have always been in support of um, the day by providing all the security measures or security um, details, you know, to ensure that we have an incident-free uh, event at the end of the day. Today is not an exception. What we are expecting is that the people who walk in here should come with their invitation card. That is very important. That is not a free-for-all uh, video. You should have an invitation card before you can walk in. And uh, when you come to, you shall also be subjected to uh, thorough body search or screening where we also want to satisfy ourselves that uh, people do not carry with them any implement or anything that is likely to cause danger to one person or the other. Then apart from that, we are going to be here in our numbers, you know, as um, our mandate requires of us. And uh, in doing so, we would um, try as much as we can to provide the maximum security for everyone. But uh, we also ask the general comportment and cooperation from the general public, especially those who will be coming here to watch. And you can see we have a number of barricades outside, demarcating where you need to pass, showing where your tickets will be searched. And all these will are things that we expect that people follow suit for us. Let's stay with the premiering because expectations among members of parliament are high ahead of the premiering of Tiger IPI's latest investigative piece on corruption in Ghana football. In an interview with Joy News, a number of MPs are hoping details of the documentary will set in motion the much-talked-about revolution in the country's football, beginning with the dissolution, with the dissolution of the Ghana Football Association. Uh, my expectations... Uh, will not be different from that of Ghanaians, that we want to see what actually uh, ANAS has for us. Uh, we'll be talking about the rot in the system, uh, especially with the Ghana Football Authority. And uh, it will gladden our hearts to know the rot there and see how best we can correct that and then uh, we can move forward. Yeah, so my expectations are high. Uh, we want the truth to come out. Then those who are capable should be brought to book so that uh, the way can be clear for others. Something is taking a political twist, which is completely out of place. Yeah. Um, particularly when the names of the presidents and the former president came up, and all of a sudden every party member is fighting for his man. Eventually, we won't see the main issue of corruption being dealt with. Do you agree? Well, uh, for now, we have not seen the details. So these are only speculations. Let the details come out uh, this evening. Then we'll know who and who are involved. Then from there, then we can pass our judgment. Do you have confidence in the state institution that whatever the outcome will be and the details will be, um, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this and ensure applied sanctions are, are meted out to those who deserve Well, I have always uh, had uh, confidence in the state uh, agencies, especially the security agencies are concerned. So if we have the political will and uh, we allow them to perform, they can uh, prosecute their mandate and bring those people to book yeah, for you. posterity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, the video will settle for good. Uh, what speculations are in the public domain as to what, who is on the video and what the person said and all other things. I think the video will settle that one for us. But then there will be the second part, which is to digest what's on the video. What's, what's the impact of that on Ghana football? What's the impact of that on the fight against corruption? So those will be the debate beyond the, we'll be viewing the, the, uh, the, the, the clip today. What actions would you expect from state officials after we see all this? Well, the, 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 the difficulty is that uh, for the first time, the, the video we are told will talk about how uh, individuals have sought to implicate the highest office of the land, the vice president and other things. So 
Um, I hope this would not uh, create any situation where government would drag their feet. In the past, when it was done with regards to the, uh, the judges, uh, indeed, the so, uh, Chief Justice and other Judicial Council took some steps, and some people were sanctioned out of that. Uh, when it happened with uh, a spirit child, uh, we know some people were punished. When they went to the port uh, with the custom officials, I know some people were punished. So minimum, we expect that some people will be sanctioned. And definitely GFA and some officials at GFA would have to, to be punished. You want the GFA dissolved? I want GFA dissolved because, you see, it, this is about credibility. This, since yesterday, I've had people asking me, is it possible that Ghana didn't qualify for World Cup simply because some people stole the matches. How do I answer that question? Because people are beginning to question the credibility of even the results we get. So the best thing to do, and I will encourage government, dissolve GFA. FIFA we know, Obana. Yes, FIFA Obana has one year, two years. Nigeria did it. Today, Nigeria is back to the World Cup. Today, if Black Star loses a match, nobody knows whether somebody went to sell the match. And we believe that when the president uh, carries out the needful, go into GFA, investigate them. If there's any evidence, punish people. If FIFA bans us, they can't ban us forever. Uh, eventually, we'll be back, and we'll be back with a, a, a GFA that the people can trust. That if we lo even lose a match, people will believe that we lost the match genuinely. But currently, people don't even believe whether we lose match genuinely or, or not. Thank you. Right. MP for second day. Any expectations? You make it sound like my surname is Ejapa. My surname is Mesa. Well, I, I am very much indifferent about, about uh, the outcome of uh, tonight's airing of the, of the documentary. Of course, he's done his job. He's uh, going to premiere it today. Uh, my indifference stems from the fact that I'm not in any way related to football. Uh, I don't participate in any, any football administration. And my understanding is that this is essentially a tip that borders on uh, you know, some misconduct in the football industry. And, and so to that extent... You've seen the political linkage to the extent of the president. Well, you know, the attempt for me to link the president to it clearly will not stand. Because if you listen, and I've listened to people who have watched segments of the tape, Mr. Nyantichi, whom I know quite well, because I've worked with him, First Atlantic, for seven years, made some statements and the statements were to the effect that if it's conditional, you give me whatever amount, I'm going to be able to give to certain individuals, including the president, to enable you facilitate your business in Ghana. Was there any proof on there that he had actually taken sums of money with the intent of advancing it to the president? No such proof is in the tape. So if somebody is speaking, whatever his, in, his intent may be, you and I are not in a position to tell. Away from that and into education, some students of the Bewa College of Education in the Pusiga districts of the Upper East region are calling on government to intervene in a decision by the college authority to withdraw them from the institution. The students, numbering 13, say the college granted them admission about three years ago, only to turn around this year and withdraw them with the reason that the exam results with which they applied for admissions into the college were not good enough. Joe News' Upper East correspondent Albert Sorry has been speaking to the students and now reports. That one, I can't even talk. We've spent a lot. we paid an admission fees. Ernestina Grumbiuk is a final year student of the Gbewa College of Education. She has been withdrawn from the college with just one month left for her to complete her course. According to her, the college says it has been directed by the National Council for Education to sack her because the senior high school exam results she used in application for admission three years ago were not good enough. I used my genuine results and applied and then I was given admission. Then based on the confirmation of our results, we were called by the principal and then he told us that we were not qualified. We were, we were given admission through uh, the, uh, the, the, the results I used and applied. 
Then he asked me, I said, no, my mass was uh, E. Then he said, okay, whatever we'll hear from them. Then the day after vacation, we were called that we have been withdrawn. Twelve other students have also been withdrawn from the college for similar reasons. They include five first-year students, six second-year students, and another final-year student. They said you were not supposed to apply with an E for the year badge of the level 200 and the level 300. And with the level 100s, they were not supposed to apply with a D7. So some of us, because we entered, well, we had admission into the college with those grades, we were redrawn. We actually applied with the hopes of getting admitted into the college as any other person who wished to pursue higher will do. So we tried our luck and by God's grace we were admitted, even with the grades that they said were not qualified. In the 2017, the results wasn't out. So I apply on a waiting. And I know that basically the college, uh, it allows a waiting. So I know that before they will give me admission, say, they will assess my results before giving me admission. So I don't know on what basis did they give me admission. Later on, they are now withdrawing me. I applied and they admitted me based on what I have applied. And they gave me the admission. Me in part saying that the same results they used to admit you it's not, not yes it's not, not qualified i'm not qualified so i'm really confused i don't know on what basis have they i mean admitted me and finally they are saying that i'm not qualified what are you parents of some of the students have joined in an appeal to government and other education stakeholders to intervene in this matter they feel that they are being punished for a situation that is entirely not their fault in their estimation, they only pushed their luck by applying for admission with whatever exam results they had. They say if the results were not good enough, the college should not have admitted them in the first place and therefore it is not fair for them to be withdrawn from the college now that they have already spent years and lots of resources studying in the institution. So we have four, uh, two semesters in a year, so imagine, we are having five, that's five semesters we've paid school fees. And then now we are asked to go back to the house, what are we going back to do? It's very painful that you go and spend money in school and at the end they will withdraw you. I mean, at the time that I had my admission, I find it difficult to even get money to go and pay. I find it difficult, very difficult. So my brother was able to go and borrow money from someone to help me, just to adjust for me to go. Pay the admission fee, later on, even what to use to buy uh, the uniforms. We, we suffered before getting that money. So we are now pleading to Minister of Education, the President of Ghana, and then other stakeholders that they should, they should, they should come to our aid. It, when Joy News contacted the Gbewa College of Education, the principal would not speak on the matter except to say that the students were not qualified to be in the school, declining to make any further comment. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, reporting from Bolgatanga. We we'll stay with education and the big examination that is taking place this week. Because while her mates are holding their pens with their hands to write the ongoing basic education certificate examination, 20-year-old physically challenged Esther Gaba is using her mouth to grab her pen to write. Esther is unable to use any of her limbs because she's paralyzed. She's been living with the condition since age five. Esther said her paralysis was as a result of an injection she had when she fell ill. Esther Gaba is one of the 10 candidates from Enyinabrim DAJHS in the Amenfi Central District of the Western Region. She aspires to be a journalist or a televangelist. We did five years now. We are ready. I started writing with my mouth since I began school. I felt sick at the age of five, and after taking an injection, I became paralyzed. I'm a complete human being, just like my mates, and so I don't look down on myself. Writing with my mouth feels the same way, just as my mates are writing with their hands. 
I feel normal. I finish at the same time everyone does. I'm confident of passing the exam. If I should get support, I'd like to be a journalist or an evangelist. You're still watching Joy News today. I am Daniel Dazi. You want to stay with us because a 22-year-old has been sentenced. Uh, his name is Mohammed Idris. He's been handed an 18-year jail sentence for engaging in robbery. That's coming up after this. Thanks for staying with us. Now, climate change is seriously affecting the ability of children to think and reason in Africa. That's according to scientists who are demanding more action from governments to deal with climate change, which is gradually becoming a major cause of diseases and poverty on the continent. Joseph Opokugapo was at a climate change conference in Zanzibar, Tanzania, where the issue came up for discussion and now reports. It's well documented that climate change stimulated drought resulting in agric failure is negatively impacting food security all over the world. We are already seeing a trend, for example, in Eastern Africa, where the time between one drought to the next is shortening. We used to have uh, about seven to nine years, but now we are seeing more frequent droughts of about between three to seven years or thereabout. But scientists say the health implications have been equally dire. Every year, about 400,000 people die from malaria globally, with Africa recording about 90% of the cases. Edna Ototo, a medical parasitologist at the Jomo Kenyatta University in Kenya, tells Joy News mosquitoes and the malaria-causing parasites they carry grow better in warmer environments. Climate change or climate variability affects uh, vector abundance and um, also affects the rate of transmission of the parasite. Okay, this can be seen when you increase temperatures because the threshold for transmission of malaria is 18 degrees Celsius. So if you go above 18 degrees Celsius, you see that um, this uh, temperature, the increase in temperature will hit the water habitats. And by increasing the temperature of the water habitats, then it means that the, the aquatic stages of the, of the vector will grow faster. Also, about 30% of all Africans suffer malnutrition. 50% of all deaths in children under five are attributable to undernutrition. The medical parasitologist says food insecurity brought on by climate change is worsening the situation, causing more stunted growth and the development of less intelligent children in Africa. The increased rate of malnutrition means that we have stunted growth, we have uh, even uh, mental, mental growth in children. You have children who are, who are less intelligent uh, because of lack of all these important nutrients. And then also lack of uh, the stress and depression that comes with the, with the lack of food and not knowing what next to do. The scientists and their media partners want governments to set up. They must set the agenda of talking climate change. And they must show the world what climate change is all about. They must show the world the impact of climate change right from the grassroots to the policy level. The conference organized by the India-based Center for Science and Environment brought together about 20 journalists from across Africa to discuss climate change impacts challenges and opportunities. From Zanzibar, Tanzania, Joseph Opukugapu reporting. Back to Ghana now, and it was constructed and opened to traffic in 2012 to ease commuting. But what was to reduce the traffic congestion on the Achimota Pokwazi Highway is turning out to be a death trap as the slightest rainfall leaves your Fanko barrier uh, portions of the interchange heavily flooded with vehicles and homes submerged in flood waters. Joy News' Komla Adam reports residents, drivers, school pupils and commuters fear they may not be lucky to escape the next time the rains come and here's why. Wait, 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 wait. 
It's Sunday afternoon. Students of the Anglican School at Ofanko Barrier are done with the final revision before Monday's first paper of this year's BEC. They emerged from under a staircase where the exercise was held and tiptoe across the mud-stained compound. Rainwaters had swept through the entire school premises, leaving visible mud traces in its wake. Apart from the school, the entire interchange at Ofanko Barrier was affected. Vehicles were almost submerged in flood waters. 45-year-old taxi driver here, Felix, was caught up in the ensuing vehicular congestion. He's been living here for over a decade and he tells me it didn't rain for long, yet the place was heavily flooded. <laughs> It's rained for only 20 minutes, but this whole area was flooded. But me name the reason why I flooded the year more, sir. Not be able to be move. As we're submerged, even my taxi was submerged. Until you had the flood in there, you saw not talk as if about too much. Even so no taxi, he reflects over the situation six years ago when the interchange was opened to traffic. To me from, but I can't get in get in there. I want to me from. I say, I'm to move. It's unlike the other flood incident. I suspect the drain tier choked. This was devastating. Authorities should step in fast before we lose lives. Alex fears the situation could get worse if something isn't done about the situation. But he is of a firm belief drains here which hitherto carried flood waters when it rains have been blocked and the sighting of a shell filling station here about three years ago is partly to blame. Uh, a filling station uh, from what I gather, not much has been done by way of flood prevention here, and residents fear with the next downpour, their homes, properties, and livelihoods will be washed away. On the walls of this structure, not too far from the interchange, ruins of a flood are visible. Madame Yawa, not her real name, speaks of the devastation the rains cause every time it rained. <laughs> It was terrible. The road, the school, our homes were all flooded. Started some four years ago. The drains are too small to have flood waters run through them. But she and her family have endured this for over five years. We know with the slightest rain, this place floods, so we have packed our valuables at a height. We want the drains to be opened up. But what could be the panacea to addressing the situation here? Some residents and commuters have just one solution. Because of filling station now, we saw one in our home urban now. First, now, okay, filling station, no one got down one of the station. I got to be the way the filling station over here. I got to know I'm going the filling station sits on a drain. The rains caused huge vehicular congestion. The only way out I is for the, to the filling station, station to be destroyed. To get a reaction to the claims by the residents. But officials available will not speak. Unit committee chairman of the Ofanko electoral area, Seth Mensa, fears a catastrophe looms. He also blames traders who have taken over the entire space. We have a, a, a problem with our data. When the Chinese people were constructing this road, they couldn't take... Uh, views from the surrounding or the people in the area. They were supposed to contact the people around the area to tell them how when it rains we have the situation, how the situation is here. But they couldn't do that. They did it anyhow. For now, when we see the roundabout, you can see that we have a lorry station there uh, plowing from uh, 
of Ankor Barra to Sotum, we have of Ankor to Ameria, Asofan, we have Kaswa station here. But I believe this, this shouldn't be a station. Well, now the rains are in, and if only 20 minutes of rain can flood this area and submerge vehicles, then imagine what hours of rain may cause. This school building may come crashing down. These homes and structures here may be washed away, and vehicles may have their parts destroyed. And unlucky commuters may not live to tell the tales of an unusually rainy day. Who will these people cry out to and who would hear them? For Joy News, Komla Adum of Ankor Barrier, Accra. To the Upper West Region now, where the War Circuit Court has sentenced 22-year-old former tricycle operator to 18 years in prison. Mohamed Idris was charged with robbery after he attacked a small-scale miner at gunpoint at Konjilairi in the Wa East District, seizing his Honda motorbike in the process. Upper West correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from Wa. The prosecution team led by senior state attorney Saeed Abdul Shakur charged 22-year-old Mohamed Idris for robbery. He was accused of pointing a local manufactured pistol on his victim, who is a small-scale miner based at Donyokura, robbing him of his Honda motorbike. The victim informed the Neighborhood Watch Committee at Bosa and they quickly mounted roadblocks in search of the accused. Around 2 a.m., the accused bumped into the roadblocks and members of the Watch Committee pounced on him and intercepted the victim's motorbike. They conducted a search on him and retrieved a local manufactured pistol and cartridge. The accused pleaded guilty to the charge of robbery. The court, presided over by Justice Barforson Ajapong, had little difficulty in sentencing the accused. The former tricycle operator's 18-year sentence is with hard labor. The police in the region has lauded the exploits of Wojo committees. The establishment of various neighborhood watch committee is yielding positive results, as evidenced by the sweet manner members of Busia Town responded to the distress call. We urge all other communities to reactivate their neighborhood committees. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. So what's enjoying us today? I am Daniel Daze. Let's talk business. Imanola Bajiriafi is standing by.